This is the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ricardo Lightborn. It is great to have you with us. Well, the government is making a significant investment in the island's youth as the summer annual youth program got underway this morning at the St. George's Gymnasium. Our John Davis role was there. Hundreds of youngsters are about to enter the real world of work thanks to the government. This is the first cycle of participants in the government's youth employment program filled an entire side of the St. George's Gymnasium for the official orientation. Outlining the government's commitment to our youth and his youth-related agenda was the Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Dahl. We want you to take this opportunity very seriously, apply yourselves, and to make sure that at the end of the day, you get something out of the program and the employer benefit from you being there. We do not want you in the private sector to babysit you. This is not about babysitting. This is the real world. It's a taste of the real world. I encourage you, stay focused because you are positive contributors to this society. Grand Bahama is counting on you. Your parents are counting on you. We at the Ministry of Grand Bahama are counting on you. And the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is now investing in you. Minister Darvel says this year's youth employment program has a new element. We have excited to expand the program to bring in young people, some young people who have disabilities. We are experimenting with this concept because every young person should be given an opportunity irrespective of their physical or mental disability. Then there were the do's and don'ts of the business world. Outlining what it means to be a professional and what a professional environment should look like was Melanie Ferguson Hodgkins of the Ministry for Grand Bahama. Eating at one's desk is not permitted. Talking, loud talking, laughing and other forms of boisterous behavior are considered unprofessional and have no place in the office. Telephones are provided to conduct company's business and should not be used for long personal conversation. The use of cell phone will not be tolerated during working hours. Computer equipment, including laptops, may not be used for personal use. You are not allowed to install any programs to the organization's computer. These forbidden programs include, but not limited to, pornography, music, gaming, that is playing numbers, etc. John Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Well, the first cycle of the Summer Youth Employment Program is July 4th through the 29th, and the second phase is going to be August 2nd through August 26th. Well, the pre-independent celebration is taking place over the weekend. The celebration began with a church service in East Grand Bahama. Several government officials were in attendance to encourage Bahamians to always be proud of their culture. Let's go to Italia Hall, who was there. Residents turning out for the ecumenical church service in celebration of the country's 43rd anniversary of independence at the Emmanuel Baptist Disciple Center in East Grand Bahama. The theme, honoring our people's excellence. The Minister of Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darvel says, there have been so many great warriors who have contributed greatly to the community of East End, adding that the government will continue to develop that settlement. We have implemented many different programs in East Grand Bahama that is essential to create entrepreneurship and subsequently employment, but we are focusing heavily on improving the necessary infrastructure so that many of the challenges many of the residents of East Grand Bahama faced over the years, we will definitely be bringing relief. Chief Counselor Marcus Cooper asked the congregation to be more considerate and kind towards senior citizens, the disabled and the blind. Those people whose shoulders that we stand upon, it is those individuals along with us who make this nation and this country the country that it is today. So we ought to pay respect to them. Administrator Deborah Cox Strawn says each Bahamian has a part to play in community development. All of us have gifts. The Father gave the gift. It is in us. He gave the gift. And if we have the gift, let's use it to build our country. 
The sermon was delivered by Minister Marlon Smith, who says, in order to see a change in the country, all citizens must put God first. We need more great women and men in our nation and our island that are lifting up a standard that will say, praise God, that I will stand for righteousness if I have to stand alone. If I have to stand by myself, I will serve the true and the living God. Father Rudolph Cooper then prayed for the nation, while those in attendance prayed and worshipped in thanksgiving. Church leaders and government officials are reminding all Bahamians to continue to push forward and to move together with one voice. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Natalia Hall. Well, our neighbors to the west are celebrating their 240th anniversary of independence. The U.S. Embassy officials traveled to Grand Bahama on Saturday evening for a big celebration on board the USS Oscar Austin. And who was there? Cleopatra Murphy. May God continue to bless both of our wonderful countries. Cheers. Cheers. U.S. Embassy officials, Cheers. Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, and other local leaders were welcomed on board the USS Oscar Austin Saturday evening to celebrate the United States of America's 240th anniversary of independence. Before guests mixed and mingled, Minister Darville noted that the countries share a strong relationship that he hopes will endure. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas and the United States of America share a wide array of cultural, economic ties and global interests. We have partnered for years in areas such as trading of goods, services, tax information exchange, tourism, education, and a host of other areas. Bound by geography, we are more than just international allies, we are friends. U.S. Charge de Affairs Lisa Johnson also highlighted the commonalities, noting that Freeport and the U.S. were experiments in liberty, where people saw a vision and created something extraordinary. She toasted the enduring partnership, now that the countries have an even deeper tie. Our two countries are more than just close neighbors. We share common history, values, and commitment to democracy, human rights, and rule of law. And now with the NBA and WNBA drafts, we also get to share first round draft picks. John Quell Jones of the Connecticut Sun and Buddy Heald of the New Orleans Pelicans. So the next time I come to Grand Bahama, I expect to see everyone here in their Pelicans jerseys. During festivities, ship commander Janice Smith gave a history of the destroyer. Oscar Austin is the Navy's first Flight 2 Alpha Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer and is named for Private First Class Oscar P. Austin. United States Marine Corps and a recipient of the Medal of Honor. Just before sunset, the U.S. flag was lowered. Officials also used the occasion to congratulate the Bahamas on its pending 43rd independence. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. And this is the busy travel period for Bahamians, and this increased travel is also creating an additional challenge for the passport office here in Grand Bahama. But recently, the minister responsible uh, gave assurance that the department's working feverishly uh, to improve the process. Let's go to Talia Hall. The wait time for passports continues to be a major issue for residents on Grand Bahama. There are currently 60,000 persons in the nation who are waiting to receive their e-passports from the passport office. There is also a new passport that is being designed, but those who have an e-passport now will not have to replace it with the new passport. The minister responsible for foreign affairs, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, says this delay is due to several issues. We've had a confluence of events uh, which uh, include the fact that the handwritten passports have, have stopped, uh, been abolished, and had to be replaced. A lot of children, uh, their passports are five years, and so they're cycling through again. The e-passports that are five years old for children, that's now cycling through again. It's the summer rush. Um, students uh, having to prepare to go to school. Um, then power failure no generator. The, the stock of books is also running down because we're in the process of there's a new passport being designed. Mitchell adds that another issue is insufficient or incomplete documentation from residents. People don't supply the documents they're supposed to have and so it's a lot of back and forth with affidavits because you know your name has to match up exactly with what is on your birth certificate and you have to prove that you're Bahamian. 
The minister says to speed up the wait time, he has gotten permission from the Ministry of Education for the temporary use of the Anatole Rogers Gymnasium in New Providence. That's going to be used, uh, we hope, for about eight weeks or so for as a collection point and, and, and uh, an enrollment point, which we think is going to be m uh, much more in the short term comfortable and able to, to hold uh, more people. There is also an express service which will cost Bahamians $200, but Mitchell says some persons are exempted from this fee. If there is a medical emergency, and the second is if, and that has to be certified by a doctor, and secondly, if, uh, if there's a student going back to school. Now Mitchell is hoping that the current wait time for passports of 12 weeks is reduced once a new passport system is implemented in January of 2017. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. And stay with us. We'll be right back after we pay some bills.